Well, good morning and welcome back to Musings of a Texas Preacher Man. I'm Scott Fisher and I'm glad you've chosen to study with me this morning. This week we're continuing our study entitled, Will the Real Jesus Please Stand Up? We're looking at some of the hard statements Jesus made that are uncomfortable for many Jesus followers. Let's put it this way. Sometimes the picture of Jesus presented for us in Scripture doesn't fit with the contorted picture of Jesus shaped by our traditions, our theologies, and even our eschatology. So we ask, will the real Jesus please stand up? We're going to finish our study for this week with the last few verses of John chapter 5. It's at the conclusion of his discussion with his disciples and the Jews who were seeking to kill him, in which Jesus initiates a discussion on resurrection. The dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Hearing his voice and believing him who sent him would bring those who are dead to life. He came to bring life. It's critical to understand that this is not talking about physical life, and physical death. The biblical definition of life is to be in intimate relationship with God, to be connected to Him. Death is separation from Him. Now, the first century Jews to whom Jesus came, for the most part, rejected Him. John tells us in John 1.11, He came to His own, and those who were his own did not receive him. On multiple occasions, Jesus declared to the Jews that though they claim to know God, they don't know him. They claim to be his people, but they prove by what they do that they don't know him, and they have never known him. In John chapter 8, Jesus says that, quote, if I claim that I don't know him, I'd be a liar just like you. They were saying that they knew him. So as we pick up the discussion in John chapter 5, it comes back to this point. Verse 37. And the Father who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. You don't have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe him whom he sent. Now, throughout the Gospels and even through the apostolic letters, the proof that the Jews did not know the Father was that they rejected the Son. Jesus would say, if you knew the Father, you would know me. If you knew the Father, you would love me. You say that you are the descendants of Abraham, but Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. But you want to kill me. This Abraham did not do. You say that you believe Moses, but Moses wrote of me. And it's Moses who will judge you. Now, a statement in verse 37, The Father who sent me has testified of me, and you have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. You don't know him. You've never even heard his voice. You don't have his word abiding in you, for you don't believe him whom he sent. The statement harkens back to John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word is standing before you. The word is speaking to you, and you don't believe it. John 1, 4 continues regarding the word, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. He is life. Those who hear his voice and believe him who sent him will live. And then John 1, 14, The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory Glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. But these Jews who were seeking to kill him, these Jews who were rejecting him, were rejecting life and choosing death. That continues in John 5, verse 39. 
You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. But it is these that testify about me, and you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. Again, he is life. And apart from hearing and receiving him, there is no life, only death. They could pound their scrolls and claim we're people of the book. But the book testified of Jesus, and they were unwilling to come to Jesus. Jesus continues to berate their apostasy. In verse 41, I do not receive glory from men. But I know you that you do not have the love of God in yourselves. I've come in my Father's name, and you don't receive me. If another comes in his own name, you'll receive him. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another, and you don't seek the glory that is from the one and only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who accuses you is Moses in whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you don't believe his writings, how will you believe my words? This is one of the most amazing passages in the New Testament. Moses wrote of Jesus. And they had set their hope in Moses, but they refused to believe his writings. They could quote Moses backwards and forwards for hours upon hours upon hours. But they did not believe. And the proof was that they rejected Jesus, their promised one, their Messiah, their prince, their king, whom they refused to allow to rule over them. Life was only found in him. Hearing his voice and Believing him who sent him. His sheep would hear his voice. Now whose voice are you listening to? Can you discern the voice of the shepherd from the voice of strangers? I'm telling you, it's life and death. Those who hear his voice are raised up out of death and into life. Well, I hope you'll continue to study with me here on Musings of a Texas Preacher Man. And if you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, come out and study with us on Tuesday nights for Tuesday nights in the Word. Hey, I hope you'll go out and make today a great day and have a safe and blessed weekend.